This is The Cliff Yates Show. Personal growth, motivation, inspiration, and philosophies for a great life. Hey, I'm excited for our guest today, man. He's, uh, we're definitely on the same mission, same mindset. Uh, uh, this guy, great business, personal and, and business uh, leadership coach. And a matter of fact, author of Right Now Leadership. That kind of says it all. And uh, he's about positively impacting and empowering others, which is what I know I'm all about. And uh, we're going to send people to GilletteSolutions.com, his website, and we'll have all those links. But hey, Kyle Gillette, man, thanks for, thanks for joining me, brother. Thank you, Cliff. I'm excited to be on your show and to share with your audience. And we'll see where this conversation goes. You're right. We do have a lot in common, and I th that makes for really interesting shows. How did you get into NLP and, uh, and actually coaching it? You're a practitioner. So tell me that journey. Yeah, I was introduced to it, but I wish I could tell you who, but I, I started seeing people with some sort of a certification with those letters. And I'm like, what is that? And then yeah. I looked, up, looked it up. And as you know, NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And I'm like, what in the world? And I looked it up on uh, chat GPT or whatever it was. And yeah. it's, it said natural language processing. And I'm like, wait a second, is this a real thing? What's going on here? And then went into it and it seems like there is a pseudoscience to it. And I did some research and then I found out that there's not, that it's legit. It actually works. Yeah. And there's a ton of research and it's been around for 40 plus years and all this stuff. And I went and went to a conference in Richmond, uh, British Columbia and did that. It was a three day conference for like 150 bucks. It was this teaser. Wow. Conference. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and, and I learned a ton though. It was like three 10 hour days of content. It was intense learned a ton and from there i went on to get a master certification and do all kinds of studying since but that that exposure and watching this guy that sat next to me he he was sitting there shaking his legs the whole time just shaking his legs and there was this break and then we came back and the, they talked about how if you have twitches or you chew your fingernails or this kind of stuff that we can help you take care of that and so they had us pair off and go through a script and the guy went away with somebody else and the person helped him with his leg twitching. He came back and he was just chill. And that was this selling point for me. That was this convincing point. And I went, okay, all right, this stuff works and it works really well. And so I pursued it full out after that. Yeah, it, it is amazing. I studied it for many years. Uh, those two guys that created Richard Bandler and... Yeah. I forgot the other guy's name. He's still speaking today, but those two guys in California, they started modeling these modeling these uh, therapists and they thought, wait, if we model their behaviors and actions, can we get the same results? Not for curative, but maybe just to get ourselves to the be a better level. And man, does it work? And I just love the presuppositions, you know, the past is not equal to the future and the map is not the territory, all these things. And anything is possible if you break it down into smaller bits. And when you change that paradigm, man, you can just, really tackle anything. I was exposed through Tony Robbins, although he, he liked to kind of distance himself from it. He went to NAC, right? Neuroassociative conditioning, but basically anchoring and you can just change behavior, right? Real quickly. So empowering. Yeah, it's pretty phenomenal. It's really the core of what I'm doing now with my clients because business owners are in their heads and they're, that's, that's the problem. They're in their heads and that, that makes them the bottleneck that makes them over control that creates all kinds of struggles for them but if you can help them release that stuff let's call it that head trash then, yeah. then the systems and the processes and the profitability and all that stuff really follows fairly easily after right that. yeah it's pretty simple when you break it down and um, are you coaching uh, corporations or uh, individuals or both uh, both but primarily small business owners great uh, working with the business owner in particular helping them with their stuff <laughs> yeah oh that's awesome man and Gillette Solutions, they can find you there. And how about the book Right Now Leadership, man? I'm all, about, I'm all about servant leadership. I love it. Yeah, so Right Now Leadership is actually a, also a rebrand. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, so the long story short is in 2022, I published that book. It went number one on three different lists. And it was it was beautiful. I was had momentum, but it was so under great. a different title. Okay. And then I got a cease and desist letter in the middle of trying to publish it in the middle of all this stuff about the name that I had on it. And I, I won't mention the name, but the name I had yeah. on it and the company's like, you're creating market confusion, all this stuff. And they're a giant $8 billion company that does accounting. 
I don't do accounting. I don't even yeah. work with accounting clients. Not even relate. It's not even. It's, it's not no. even a conflict. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So hired a lawyer and said, "Hey, this is what's going on." He said, "Yeah, they're wrong." And he said, "Okay, great." So we wrote them and said, "You're wrong." And they said, "No, we're not." Back and forth for nine months, and then finally they're like, "We're going to sue you if you don't stop." And I said, "Okay, how about we not do that?" Because the, my lawyer said it'd be about fifty thousand dollars to deal with the situation. And I said, "I don't. It's not worth it to me." So I rebranded and yeah. then I had to pull the book off the shelves, which was not ideal because all the momentum was lost because you don't get to keep the momentum. You don't get to keep the reviews. You get a new ISBN and all this stuff. I so, hate that. I know it. Yeah. Yeah. So I put it back up. I changed the book slightly. I think it's better, but the premise of the book remains the same and it's, it's called the blue leadership framework. And Within right now leadership, it's the idea that right now you can change your mindsets and habits. Right now you can make an adjustment in any one mindset or any one habit that will make a difference in your leadership right now. And right now is the time to make that change. And right now is the time to leave. Yeah. And and so I walk people through four pillars and a bunch of mindsets and habits to help them uh, make that possible. That's great. Blue leadership. What is it again? I, I'm writing it down. Yeah. So blue leadership framework and framework. Blue okay. Yeah, and blue stands for four things, which okay. is give me those. Be, yeah, be a self-aware leader, lead with accountability, use a growth mindset, and empower others. So B L U E. Yeah, I love that. Oh, I like it. You know what? I think yeah. That, so that turned out to be better, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, fundamentally, yeah. It, it all tied together, and, and I made it all work, which is great. And I'm getting now the book's getting momentum again. I'm, I have it on my website for one dollar okay. for the PDF, and I have a signed copy for 19.95 for people. So we're we're making momentum build again. Yeah, it's tough. I had a so you know I did uh, 30 years with the LA Sheriff's Department, retiring as a sergeant. So I wrote a book right called Deputy, and you oh, see cool. the badges on there. So the one badge is the one I wore in New York, and the one for California, I had to make that up. Because I got a cease and desist letter from the legal department of the LA Sheriff's Department that the the image of our our badge is copyrighted and we are telling you to cease and desist uh, of using that image. So it's okay to, for me to make up a, f a fake LA badge, but having the real one, I'm not allowed to use, even though I'm saying, hey, I was an LA County Sheriff's Sergeant, and then they don't want me to use the actual badge. You think they would sue me the other way around, right? Yeah. Did you get any deputies pushing back because it looks fake? No, no. They, they, they actually, since I put it out there, actually put out the cease and desist letter. And man, there was a lot of people were going crazy about that. Screw them. You know, just use it. I want the original cover. You know what I mean? Give me a copy of that. And, oh, cool. You leveraged you know, it. Yeah. yeah. But I was like, you, I don't want to spend 20000 to win. You know, that's not going to be. Yeah. So I just like it's you, I just, thing. yeah. So I, I, I ended up uh, rebranding as you did. I, I, uh, I just did a new cover is all I did. And, and then there was no problem. But, you know, come on, man. I was like, I was really shocked by that. You want me to fake it and not use the real one because of that image. And they went through that with several TV shows. You know, uh, LAPD had no problem being depicted in these TV shows. But the L.A. Sheriff, they had, they had to, like, blur out the badge in one show called 10-8 uh, and they had, to, they, they had to do a couple of things, although sometimes I still see the actual patch and badge used, but it's a violation of their copyright. So Interesting, but, right? Yeah, the I resonate. People like to die on are, are fascinating to me. <laughs> yes, I just can't. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, they're the big dog, man. The L.A. Sheriff's a big dog. So they got all sorts of lawyers. And and uh, and thank sure. God when I was being sued as a member, I really needed them. So I was glad they were there. <laughs> they got some heavy yeah, right. hitters. So, yeah. <laughs> So it's all good, man. Through every adversity, there's an equal or greater opportunity, right? So I latch on to that, man. What is it? What is it? There's no failure, only feedback, right? Yeah, so that's the way I, man, yeah. <laughs> I go with that. Have you ever been to any Tony Robbins things or studied him at all? Or? I, no, I haven't. I haven't read any of his books. The guy that I trained under was, his dad was partners with Tony Robbins at the very beginning. Oh. Oh, and then uh, Th Thad James is his name, and Thad James went off and did his own thing. And his son, um, what's his first name? Oh, I remember Thad James. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Matt James is now running his own organization. He's been there for a long time. So, yeah, I ended up going to some real estate training, and it turned out to be actually life training. I went to Jim Rohn, right, the original oh, yeah. guy, and like uh, it was ninety. 
91. And then I ended up going to Tony Robbins, who used to work for Jim Rohn, and that led to all that. So then, then that's NLP. It led, led to that. Yeah, Richard Bandler and the other guy. I can't remember his name now, those two it's guys. It's Grinmer. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's pronounced Grinder, right? Yeah. Yeah, Grinder. Grin, yeah, Yeah, because yeah. when you spell it, it looks like Grinder, but it's actually Grinder. Yeah, but those guys yes. are... Yeah, those guys are great. It's funny that people haven't even heard of NLP. They go, what's that? And I'm going, how can you not know about yeah. this? But Well, you know, yeah. what I learned when I did the first training, or actually, no, the second training, was the the beauty of it. Because some people may that are listening may not have any clue what we're talking about. Yeah, but you're right, yeah. To really summarize it, yes, it does stand for Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is basically what you say programs you to behave in certain ways or to expect certain things to tell your brain to go see those things. And then yeah. you, your perception becomes your reality. That even in of itself is a little bit convoluted, but the short of it is NLP is modeling successful people. That's what it is. Yeah, and that's successful right. People have learned that when you say positive things about yourself and about other people, you kind of bring that to life. And when you say negative things about yourself or, or other people, you bring that to life. So choose right. choose which one you want because <laughs> it is your choice. Uh, w- one of the stats that they shared in the training was uh, 2 million bits of inf- every one second, there's 2 million bits of information that we have to filter, but we only get to keep or pay attention to 126 bits. And yes. so the main message was, what are the 126 that you're going to pay attention to? Yeah. Choose wisely. <laughs> yeah, right. Choose wisely. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I was watching a show with my wife called The Challenge, and and the, and the host was saying, "Okay, you have to pick somebody to be, you know, eliminated or whatever." And choose wisely. I was, <laughs> he just said that. Yeah, it's so true. But man, that perception is reality is so true. It's like, and there was another thing that goes along with that. It's so true when you think, how are these people? Why are they thinking this way? It's because so people are not broken. It's actually their map of the world that's broken. They're actually they're functioning properly. It's just that their their perception is wrong. It's actually true to them what they're thinking, and right. that's why they're behaving that way. And so, I, I just love that paradigm because people are reacting to how they their perception is reality, and I've seen that so true. And so and so with the language too. And uh, Tony Robbins did a thing where he was waiting, and I've used this, and I noticed this too. He was trying to uh, check into a hotel, and he was so frustrated. And when he got to the front desk, he said, uh, "He said to the guy, he said, right now I am so peeved, right now." And the guy kind of looked at him, and they laughed because the word was so soft. He didn't have an emotional attachment to it, right? If you start saying word, my and I am so pissed off right now, you start reacting how you're connected to those words. And as a cop, I saw people using this to get themselves worked up for a fight. I saw them using words to get ready to fight and using their body and marrying yeah. those two, right? Motion effects, emotion, getting ready to the fight, man. You know, they would shake their head or the, right before a fist would go, a certain they would move in a certain way, right? Getting themselves worked up to physically react in a certain way. Yeah. And so I try to use that now in my own programming linguistically so it's so it's such a powerful tool to use if, if people would would adopt it yeah what's amazing to me i i walk people through a process that takes it's two four-hour calls and okay they're 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 long but yeah what happens is we dig up we we light up all the the trash all the head trash all the baggage that's holding people back the first call and then the second call we get rid of it and the reason it works is because change is instant because we decided to be phobias are a great example. Yeah. Some we decided to be afraid of spiders in an instant. We had this experience and it instantly made us afraid of spiders. Prior to that, we didn't have any fears. There, we didn't have any fears. They were just a they were just a bug. Yeah. And then we had this spider fly at us or someone did something that created us created fear in us with spiders and boom, instantly now we have that fear. Well, it's the same thing with our negative emotions, our limiting beliefs, our misaligned values, all that stuff just at some point finally locked in would be the way to put it in terms of our, our mindsets. And then what that means, though, is the opposite is true, too. You can instantly unlock it as well, let it go in an instant. And so my process that I'm walking my clients through does that. We light all the stuff up that's kind of ugly, let's call it. And yeah. then 
the next call is all about letting it go. And there's a very specific process called mental emotional release that I do with my clients to let it go. And so they'll come to me wanting to change stuff in their career or their business. And they have all this baggage tied to it. We light it up the next day, we let it all go. And every single client without fail has had a list of a hundred things or more that that's all this negative self-talk, all this negative emotions, all this stuff attached to who they are in that moment, who they are as a leader, who they are in their career. We light it up, we let it go. And then we go back through all 100 of them or however many there are. And we check and we say, okay, is this how you identify still? Do you still resonate with this? We go through every single one of them. And about when I work with clients, there's probably two or three that are still kind of there, but the other 97 aren't. And we make sure that the other the three that are still there are gone in that, in that session too. So people come in and they're messed. <laughs> they're, they're all, they're all, you know, they're, they've got stinkiness in their brains, let's call it. And then stinking thinking. Go, yeah. Stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. And then boom, they're programmed differently afterwards by their own choice, by their own work. I'm just guiding them. And it's really yeah. this phenomenal experience. And one guy I finished up with last week and he, he came in and he had a fidget spinner. He was just spinning the the fidget oh, the yeah. whole time and wiggling around and doing all this stuff. And he had 118 negative things that he was saying about who he is and his identity, all this, I can't, I shouldn't, I should have all this language. We do the process. I see him the, the next week on a Tuesday and he's like, it's gone, man. I can focus. I went to this conference and the conference was amazing. I took in what I needed. I wasn't overwhelmed. I can already start to apply it. It's just done. And so now he's rocking and rolling in, in his real estate business. He's already doing well, but it was it was that thing that was holding him back. Yeah. So really, really amazing what's possible. He was he was shooting all over himself. Exactly. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing once you get habituated into thinking this way. And it's you know, and I always tell people it's not like I'm up all the time or I don't have down and valleys. Of course I do, but I've habituated at first you have these tools you plug in to change your state. And eventually it becomes so habituated. That's my default, yeah. you know, state of mind, right? It just, it happens and it becomes a habit. And, and then you'd see in other people, right? Like you said, those shoulds are that negative language that they're speaking to themselves. And it's like, you're right. It's such an inside job, which is empowering too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you were the one that said it, but you were the one that can undo it. You were the yeah. one that programmed it, but you were also the one that can unprogram it, if you will, or deprogram it. But I think what people don't recognize, you know, for the business owners that are listening is you do this and it's wonderful for you, but it pays forward to your team yes. because you become a better leader. And in my book, I talk about five steps to empowering your team, five steps to empowering people. And it's a really beautiful process. We can, we can go into it, but please um, let's go into it. Yeah. I want to go into the five steps you, you can take to empower your team, right? Yeah. So when you do this process, you can, you can then realize that, wait a second, I'm surrounded by people I can empower and I, I don't, I don't yes. need to be in the way. Yeah. But, so it's five steps. Let me summarize the Please. steps and then I'll yeah. break them down. So the first step is start with fascination. Second step is to study. And again, I'll explain them all. Third, yeah, step, please. Okay. third step is to listen and ask powerful questions. Fourth step is automatic accountability. And the fifth step is, um, celebration. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah. So first step is, is start with fascination. Cliff, what was the last TV show or movie that you watched that you were fascinated by? Oh, mend the line. Mend the line. Yes. I haven't heard of that one. I'll yeah, that. It's uh, it, it just dealt with, uh, people, uh, veterans coming back with PTSD and they were given the task of the one gentleman to go learn how to fly fish from another veteran and how that changed their focus and what they were doing. And it changed, it transformed their mental state without, you know, pharmaceuticals. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. So when you were watching that show, did you start a conversation with your wife in the middle of it and just start chit chatting over the show? No. Did you text or get up and walk away many times or find yourself doing something completely different while the show was on? No. No, of course not. You were, you may have been at the edge of your seat 
you may have been riveted by the show full full attention you know you're giving all your faculties to it or as much of your faculties as possible yes if we're going to empower people we want to start there riveted and there's an assumption that comes with it the assumption is this person is brilliant this person is amazing i have high expectations for this person Okay, so now we're going back to those 2 million bits that I mentioned before. Yeah. The visual of those 2 million bits is your refrigerator. Imagine your refrigerator full of toothpicks. The volume of a refrigerator filled with toothpicks is approximately 2 million toothpicks. Now, every second that tooth that refrigerator is above your head and it's dumping out those toothpicks. But you get to choose, you reach in there and you grab 126 of them and those 126 are the ones that you want to pay attention to. And they point you towards Susie or Bob or Joe or whatever the employee's name is brilliant. They're really yeah. insightful or your wife is or your child is. And so then your brain goes and finds the reasons why that's true because you've you've assigned it something. Yes. Your conscious mind is the goal setter. Your unconscious mind is the goal getter. So now I've set the goal that my employee is brilliant. Now I have to go get it. I have to go prove it to be true. So yes. that's foundational to empowerment you have to start there because you engage your unconscious mind in the process step two now that you're grabbing those bits is you study i'm not talking about grabbing a book i'm talking about studying the people studying the person that you want to empower and this isn't something that requires additional time if you're leading a team whether it's online or in person they interrupt you all the time Yes. If, you, if you're leading your children, they interrupt you constantly. Yes. As you're leading in your family, there's interruptions. Those are inter those interruptions are beautiful moments to study. To yeah. go, okay, Haley, my middle daughter, interrupts me. The first thing she asked me this morning is, where's mom? And it's like, okay, what can I learn about my daughter? Because she doesn't even greet me. She wants to know where mom is. <laughs> what, yeah. what am I learning about her by that question? And then all kinds of other things, you know, you have these two to 12 minute interruptions constantly as an, as a employer, as a leader in your life. So study your people, figure out, are they visual? Yeah, are they that's audio? right. Are they kinesthetic? You know, what is their form of communication? Number three, you've got those two together. So now you really know the person pretty dang well, even if you only do this for a week, your level of knowledge and appreciation and expectation of that person is going to rise pretty yeah. high. Good thing. That's right. So then now you know how to ask great questions because you know what questions will fit them. And then you do what I call shut up. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. You, you ask the questions and you just shut up and listen. So I'll give one question and we'll move on to step four. The question that I recommend to all my clients is what do you think? Four words, simple. What do you think? Right. Ask yeah. people that question, when they bring you a problem, when they bring you some sort of a situation, flip it around, say, well, what do you think? And wait. Yeah, Quiet wait. Don't wait. feel the need to jump in, right? <laughs> yeah. When I talk about this in presentations, I, I talk about that and then I wait for eight seconds. They don't yeah. know how I'm going to do it, but I wait for eight seconds and I give it that gap. So I'm going to do it right now. that's eight seconds and it's funny because people think i glitched or like something's wrong with the audio yeah, or something yeah because people don't know how to wait eight whole freaking seconds for someone else to talk so make sure you wait i had to or learn that with I, when i did stand-up comedy i had to learn to not be uncomfortable with the pause because i wanted to fill it yeah so sorry to interrupt you but yeah oh no you're good no it's true they we have to have those yeah Pauses are sometimes more powerful than the words. They are, yes. So the fourth step is automatic accountability. Here's how this works. I, in the book, I have a, another process that I walk through to develop accountability for yourself. And you can, pat, you can use this for other people. But in the empowerment phase, basically what happens is if I say to you that I think you're amazing, or I say to my brain, at least, that I think this person's amazing. I get to know who they are and I ask powerful questions and then they come up with the solutions. Accountability just happens yeah. because I'm not telling Joe what to do. He's coming up with the solution himself. And so he has integrity to follow through. Right. And so it's so much easier to get people to do what you quote unquote want them to do 
because they want to do it anyway because it was their solution. And if exactly. you can let your ego and pride go, which is yeah. a lot of what empowerment is, is letting go of that and not be the bottleneck, boom. Now your organization has an instant feedback to it that grows it. Quick story in the middle of all this. Please, I'm working yeah. with this IT guy and he has two locations, one in Hawaii and one in California. And we were talking about what are your goals for your business this year? And he wanted to sign up six new clients. And so we had conversations about that. What does that look like? And I challenged him a little bit. I said, okay, what, what would it be if you stretched yourself on this goal? What would the number be instead? And so he said, well, I don't know. I got to talk to the team. And, and so he went and had a conversation with his team. And between me and the team and himself, we came up with 24. So it went from six to 24. Here's the deal. The team bought into it. So just that one conversation alone, basically forexed his business. Yeah. And forexed his goal. Now he had, they have to pursue it and accomplish it, but just the quote unquote dream of it is now in place, which produces a high, much higher return. Yes. So, so this is, this is the fruit of this type of thing is you get such a beautiful return when you allow the people that are around you to take ownership. You know, it's huge. And and that twenty four and the in the return on that is more exciting than the six, and it's going to draw them more powerfully. Yep, yep, exactly. So then the fifth step is celebrate, and it's yes. to celebrate the setbacks and celebrate the successes. Because here's what happens: Eric talks to his team, or my client Gabriel talks to her team, and and gives them the opportunity to come up with a solution. They come up with the solution, they execute on it, and it fails. And then Gabriel goes to the client or the the teacher, actually, she she runs two schools, but goes to a teacher and says, you know what, that was dumb. If you would have done it my way, it would have worked out. So guess what? Now the next time the teacher has a problem, she's going to farm her thinking back out to my client instead of come up with solutions herself. Yeah. Instead... You can say, you know what? It looks like that didn't work out, but what lessons did you learn from this? And I really appreciate the effort and the follow through you put into this. Boom, trust remains. And then yeah. the next time they try it, they're going to try it. And then you continue to celebrate the little successes and also make sure you celebrate what they attempted in their setbacks. Yes, that is awesome. I like that. And I like that study. I like, you know, that's even part of NLP. And I like, first of all, when you assign, you know, how great somebody is. So you've, you've assigned a table of belief. And now you went out looking for legs to support that belief system of how great they are. And you just go mining those things. That's so awesome. And then, oh, man, auto accountability. I like that because, like you say, if it's their idea that you sparked from their mind, they, uh, they're going to buy into it. And so they're going to take action on that. So man, that's such a good program that you have. So is that the, now the program, how long does it last? I know you two, is it just two the two, four hour sessions? No, or? no. When I'm working with my clients that that's the very beginning of it. Cause yeah, then, okay. then the work. So, so change, a lot of people take change. Let me, let me answer the question more philosophically. Yeah, please. To, so it's understood why I do what I do most people approach change backward. So when Cliff or Bob or my wife or whoever is dealing with some sort of a struggle, they go, okay, I just need to focus. I just need to focus and stay motivated and, and do the right actions, do the right things to make this thing happen, to, to accomplish this goal. Well, sure, that's true. It's important to do those things. But the problem is your focus hasn't worked in the past. And your actions aren't doing what you want them to do right now either. So repeatedly doing the same thing doesn't ultimately work out in the long run, right? Trying harder isn't always the answer. Sometimes it is, but it's not always the answer. And sometimes trying harder really sets you back. Yeah. On the right things. That's right. So those are the last two steps of change. The first step and the first place we need to go is to release which is all that the baggage that I was talking about, right? So I already explained that, but you need to release all that stuff, all that head trash that's in the way, yeah. and then you're free. So the, the weight loss example is a perfect example of this. Yeah. When I, I'm in the middle of a weight loss journey, I want to lose 25 pounds. I've lost 11 so far. And it's like, if, if I'm all about 
who I was and I focus on that, that I don't want to be, I don't want to be fat. I don't want to be a 40 year old. That's not in good shape. I don't want to X, Y, Z, whatever it is, all these, I don't wants. That's going to pull me back. That's all my baggage. And it's yeah. going to pull me yeah. back. So I have to release that and go, you know what? I'm, I'm healthier than I've been in a long time. I'm progressing. I can do all these things and I'm making progress towards what I want to become. So I've released that old identity in a way the old stinking thinking, yeah. old programming. Now I can create That's step two. I can create from a place of freedom. Now I'm creating a new version of myself, which is why when I'm done with that first two sessions with my clients, we need to move on to the next set of sessions, which is to create who they want to be. Now you have this blank slate. Who do you want to be as a yeah. business owner, as a, as a husband, as a wife, as whatever. Let's create that new version. And then we take intentional action towards it and stay focused, right? Steps right. three and four. And that's, that's the work that I do with my clients, which that's three months. And then we do ongoing coaching from there to implement it and then start to shift the business, right? Because we yeah. changed the person. Now we can really make a difference in the business. Yeah, definitely. That's good. I like that whole thing. Cause I'm finishing up like a health coaching, uh, accreditation and it was, uh, Man, they have a great, uh, they have several pillars, but they, they talk about client-led coaching, which I think you're really kind of pointing to. You're just walking really beside them as they go to where they want to get to. And it's so, I like, you know, because you read over and over again, to fulfillment, really, you need to be making progress towards a worthy goal. So just making progress is going to really set us at ease. So I think we need to take massive action and then see where we're at. We know where we want to go. Now check right? Check the results and adjust accordingly. Don't continue. You know, if you're trying to get to the sunset and you decide you find out you're heading east, uh, we need to turn around. Uh, <laughs> so if we don't check where we are, then uh, we will never know. We're going to get way, way off course. I like what you said. And I want to go back. It's so empowering, this power of questions, the brain so wonderfully it will not argue with you. Whatever question you ask, it will look for an answer. Why am I so screwed up? It'll look for an answer. Hey, what's good about this? What can I do with this information? What can I learn today from this? It'll look for those answers. All you have to do is change the question and everything changes. And so That's I like so you. True. I like you hit on that. That is awesome. I, I imagine people that you're coaching, as soon as they start changing their questions, automatically things start changing. It, it does. And it's fun for them because when you change your questions to yourself, that's a, a stress release. That's a learning opportunity. But when you change the questions that you ask of other people, that also releases stress for you because now you're allowing them to think for themselves. And a lot of leaders really struggle to give other people the opportunity to think for themselves because they're holding everything too tightly. Yeah. And it's not, it's not necessarily an ego thing, or at least not real obviously. It's just, you own the business and you got to come up with the solutions. You got to wear the, the S on your chest and you got to wear the Wonder Woman outfit or whatever, right? Yeah. And that, that gets in the way. So when you ask the questions, it, it releases unbelievable insights and frees you up from all that stuckness that we experience. There is no more tension. There's no more anger. There is only what's good about this. And man, when you change that. I don't care if you're late or you miss something. What's good about this? Or, you know, I get, so I always, I always get places too early. My wife will tell me, but then, Hey, what can I notice around here that I never noticed before? And you start looking at things and it just no. And now she gets there to the airport early because she realizes there's no tension anymore. And so, right. yeah. And if you, I sometimes even create, instead of cr creating a delusional negative, I create a delusional positive. Oh, I, mi <laughs> I miss that flight. You know what? Maybe, maybe if I was on that flight, maybe it would have crashed or something. I thank God I didn't make the flight because it was probably a reason why. And I'm thankful for that, man. It's automatically changed everything. And then you're not putting those negative toxins in your body. And, uh, man, just through the mind, right? It's so amazing. Yep. Setting expectations. It's, it's huge. Absolutely. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm going to be doing some coaching too, but I'm, I'm, I'm geared more towards the mindset like you are, but I, I'm on this track that I'm taking this course by Mark Sisson. This is a guy it's primal health coaching Institute out of Miami. It's, it's kind of a paleo thing, but he has 10 primal laws for health and he's in his seventies, man. And he's like jacked, you know, 
and uh, he doesn't really doesn't work out that often. And so uh, I really kind of believe in everything that he talks about doing, man. So I'm looking forward to that. So I was interested in how you were coaching and your, and your client led paradigm. I like that very much. Yeah. I mean, the answers are within the client. Almost Correct. Always. Yeah. Almost always, you know, sometimes they just really, really don't know. And yeah. that's where you, you try to help them get partway there. And you may then at some point offer some sort of a suggestion because it's just knowledge they don't have. But when it's something that's about them yes. deep to who they are, they have the answer. I do not. Correct. If it's information about something that they want to try to pursue in their business. Uh, like they, they don't know how to, if they have a WordPress website and they've never done WordPress before. And I know a specific plugin to suggest to them and it would take them years to figure that out. Yeah. Well, of course I'm going to tell them they're not, that that answer is not within them. <laughs> right. No, no, I know, I know what you mean too. And I like that uh, his, this coaching program that he has. So they have the knowledge principle and then they have the coaching pillar and then they have the business and then they have marketing and they stick with you the whole way. I mean, they do not leave you. They want you getting clients really before you even graduate. And, but, but they talk about what you, I think you were hitting on is what they, yeah, you know, don't, our tendency as the expert, right, is we want to dump all this information on them that really they don't even want that. They want to be coached into the things they already know they need to be doing. And we don't need to dump all this onto them to let them know what an expert we are, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah that's that's hard. Um, yeah. Not, not do that. It, took me, it probably took me a year or two of running my coaching business before I went, you know what? First of all, I don't have it all figured out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, Come on, dude. And second, yeah. it's a lot more stressful for me if I have to have all the solutions. Yeah, even that's though my right. Business is called Gillette Solutions, <laughs> but it's yeah, the solution. but it, but they have the solutions. <laughs> you know, yeah. I I always think of the, you know you know coaching. I'm thinking you know if I was to do that kind of coaching, I was thinking it really just comes down to we need to get the person to realize they have everything that they need to get what they want. And then they just need to decide what they want and what needs to be done to get it. And if they're willing to pay that price. And if so, now we will hold them accountable, like teach them to be accountable to themselves to start doing those things in that order, right? Yep, 100%. That, that's pillar two, lead with accountability. Lead and with accountability, that's right, yeah. I've had a couple of people tell me that, that they one lady called me Mr. Accountability because that's what I do. I'm I'm in my coaching. You tell me what you want to accomplish by the time we're done with the call. Yeah. What you want to accomplish between now and the next time we meet. People are always telling me that because that's a question that I ask. Yeah. Well, then I'm going to make sure when we meet next time that I ask you about that. And if you didn't yep. do it, then what the crap's going on? What's happening? Did, yeah. Why didn't, didn't you do that? that? Yeah. And that's a lesson in and of itself for them because there, there's something going on inside of them that they aren't in agreement with what they said they were going to do. Well, what's what, why is that? What's the doubt there? What's the hesitation there? Yeah. What's changed? There's lessons in, in all that. That's right. Yeah. Sometimes so, that's a good thing that they didn't, they didn't hold themselves accountable because you're going right. to find the why behind that. And that's when you, you want it to be revealed is when you're working with them. So that's perfect. Yep. Yep. All I was talking to my wife when we did this rebrand, I'm like, what is, what do my clients really want? What is, yeah. what is, what do they really want? You know, there's a transformation part of it, but the middle part, what do they really want? They want solutions. They want accountability. Everyone knows they want solutions. That's obvious. I want yep. results. Yeah. Everybody wants the, but what most people don't realize is they want accountability too. That's, that's the, the heart of it. That's like the empathy side of things when it comes to what I'm doing with people is, Hey, you want these solutions, but you're not willing to do the work. What's going on there? What, it, what is it about this work that scares you? What is it about yeah. yourself that says, I can't, I'm not capable of doing this? Yeah. What's going on there? And now we're getting to the heart of it where then real change happens and then consistency is what follows, you know, a, a changed business, changed leadership, because they're learning about who they are. And that's a big deal. And then as a Christian, I also help them with learning whose they are as well. Yeah, that's right. And so there's these layers to, to the coaching. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I'm on the same path. Yeah. So I've been I mean, just love getting into the word lately. I'm following a guy called Jack Hibbs out of California. And uh, I don't know if you heard of him, but he, he's just bringing the Bible in, into today. No, this is happening right now. This is written as if it was yesterday. This is mm, a living, yeah. a living word. 
to tell you who he is, he's the one that recently Mike Johnson had come to the prayer in, in Congress, and he was attacked for using, you know, our father, you know, a gender. And so, uh, oh my goodness. yeah, and so <laughs> he just was like, you know, that's the war that we're in is in misinformation, the, the attacks that are going to be happening this year, the attack on uh, truth, the attack on family and marriage. And so these are the things that we're at battle with. Right. So, yeah. So where do you guys live? Where, where are you where are you at in the country? Uh, we live two hours north of Seattle. So we're right on the British Columbia border. Oh, OK, great. Yeah, I'm over in Florida on the Space Coast. And so yep. and we get to watch all the launches here. We're just 20 miles south of Cape Canaveral. So it's pretty amazing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's SpaceX, that's cool. man. He does it yeah. right. If it's a SpaceX launch, I have a little app, right? It always goes off on time without question. And if it's a government launch, maybe scrapped 50% of the time. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's Elon, funny what he gets it done, man. It is right on target, man. Yeah, when you have an unlimited budget, and yeah, you right. Know, you can make you know, things you don't happen. Have to make a profit. It's kind of it's easy to to scrap stuff. But yeah, that's a whole yeah. Other topic. Awesome. <laughs> so, and your wife, what does she do? She uh, she was a nurse for fifteen years. Now she's God bless her. With me. Ah, thank her she, for her service. Oh, that's great. Oh yeah, yeah. And then she's starting a copywriting business as well to, to ah, generate more revenue for the family. It's exciting, isn't it? It's great. The opportunities we have. It's just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think yeah. that that's the secret, empowering others to take advantage of the of, of what we have and to protect it through those. I think entrepreneurs are going to be paving the road to preserving the country, returning it to its grandeur for sure. Yep. And I, yeah. I honestly also think that part of what's happened in the marketplace to touch on the Christian side a little bit. Please do. Yeah. Is so I'm part of this organization called Liberty Road Foundation, and, and basically oh. it's groups of nonprofits and groups of business owners that get together where the business owners are supporting the nonprofits through time, talent, and treasure. Yeah. And I, I firmly believe that there's going to be a revival in the marketplace yes. in other places as well, but in the marketplace where leaders that are living through their Christian values and trusting God start to show up, they start to show up in that way. And then people are like, wow, there's more to this than hypocrisy. You know, mm -hmm. not everybody that's a Christian is a hypocrite. And you know, a lot of us are, including myself at times. Yes. But we do try to live and honor and love our other people yeah. and love God, most importantly, through this whole thing. And when people see that genuineness, I think they're going to be attracted to to God. I think and, so, too. Yeah, I'm on the same mission for that. Yeah. And for me, because of that, I'm leaning into creating a community for businessmen of faith, for Christian businessmen. Yeah to join together, to be in this community where, yes, yes, we're going to have a community where we learn about God, where we learn about that kind of thing. But it's also, I want to help you grow your business. I want to take away your stress. I want to help you get to this better place because if you're in a better place, now you can lead better. And if you can lead better, yeah. you're making a better impact. And if you're making a better impact, that impacts those families. And I, I worked at a men's mentoring program for nine and a half years and I saw when the man wasn't healthy in the family, and yes, the mom needs to be healthy too. I get it. But I'm focusing on, on the men. If the man's not healthy in the family or just not present, it's incredibly destructive. And, and as a deputy, I'm, you saw it like crazy. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you saw it like crazy. Yeah. My, my mentor in that program was a, was a CHP and a deputy sheriff for, oh. you know, 20, 30 years, whatever it was Great. in California. So yeah. um, he saw it like crazy too. And that's why he started the program. But the impact is generational because yeah. if if I can help my clients, whether they're a, a guy or a girl, help them with their business, help them to be a better leader and get to a better place in their mindsets, that impacts their kids. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. Now and they're parenting yeah. better. Their kids are having better relationships with their, their parents. They're having better relationships with their friends. And this uh, pays forward like crazy. Yeah. It's, it's biblical, right? You leave a legacy... To your children's children which is what it says and who do you follow in the kind of a christian business uh area anybody in particular uh i'm connected with a guy named justin janowski so i follow him a little bit not yeah. not super connected with him at this point I'm, I'm in his community but not a ton connected uh there's a guy named bruce wilkinson that's not necessarily in the business world but he's someone that i think has unbelievably good content uh, there's another guy named Chuck Missler who passed away recently, but he has a ton of content that's okay. It, it's not business based, but it's really, really good content, biblical content. 
Um, and then there's an, another lady named Jenny Allen that I just started following, and she Jenny. does mindset stuff as it relates to scripture as well. Oh, so great. those are the folks that I've been following recently. There's a guy, uh, Myron Golden. I don't know if you've seen him, but he's he's phenomenal, I've, man. I've heard that name, yeah. Yeah, he's very, he knows the Bible and he knows that we are meant for abundance and he puts that in the Bible based business, you know, theology and philosophy. And he's really awesome because he knows scripture well. And he's about empowering other people and, and seeing everybody be, you know, have life more abundantly. And of course I like guys like Ed Milet and John Maxwell, all these guys, you know, I just oh, yeah. find right. these guys. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great, man. Well, listen, I'm going to be respectful of your time. Where can I send people? Uh, we got the book and we got the, uh, Blue Leadership, uh, what is it called? The Blue Leadership Framework. framework. Yeah, Blue Leadership Framework is the book. Amazon, right? Can they get it? Can they order it today? Yep, you can get it on Amazon. Right now I'm offering it on my website, the ebook version of it for Beautiful. Uh, one, one dollar. So you can go on there, grab the book for a dollar, and just visit uh, gillettesolutions.com slash book, and it'll take you right to the page. Beautiful, the man. Copy. Yeah. Well, I'm going to send everybody there and have the links because I think people would definitely benefit with working with you, man, because you are there's no better investment than in yourself. I mean, the, yep. the, the ROI will be tenfold. I can guarantee you that, even though you might not think so. But, uh, man, it's good to have a coach. You know, a lot of people that get really good at things, they do it without a coach. And everybody that gets really great, they all have a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, and so <laughs> if you want to be really great. Get a coach because all the grades have one, man. So any final words, Kyle? I, I, and I appreciate you being with me today. Yeah, wait your turn. Just wait your turn. Tune in and hear what the people around you have to say. You're leading whether you whether you know it or not. And sometimes it's best to lead in silence. Yeah, we're always communicating. That's for sure, man. Whether, you, whether you're doing it consciously or not. So true. Kyle Gillette is awesome. You rock. Hang around, brother. Uh, and uh, we'll have a little debriefing. Everybody else, you know what to do. Subscribe to the show. It tells the computer you're interacting, and they'll show more people what's going on, and uh, we can empower more people. All right. Thanks, everybody.